Today's episode is brought to you by ViralCast, the first and only completely done-for-you podcast production service. Build new relationships, create a deeper connection with your database, and get exposure to new audiences. Here's how it works. You interview influencers in your market. You start building that new relationship. Then you take that valuable content and share it with your database. Your guest then shares the content with their list. Everybody wins. You get new relationships, you create a deeper connection with your list, and get exposure to new people that you would never have access to. And look, if you're currently mining your database with video, stop. Audio is the new reality. We are living in an influence economy. Exposure is the new social capital. Go to ViralCast with a K to learn more. And right now, for the first 25 subscribers, we're offering a 50% off the getting started price. Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go! Hey everybody, what's up? How's it going? How's your day? How's your week shaping up? I hope it. I uh, hope it's going well. Um, geez, we missed our last episode, episode two forty eight or something. Um, uh, I was out. Uh, you know, I take my kids every 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 year. I, I take one of my kids. We go do a trip, just me and them. Um, last week I did a weekend trip. I took my eleven year old son Hudson, and we cruised to L A. Did the whole L A. thing. Uh, you know, Beverly Hills, Rodeo Drive, Hollywood Walk of Fame, uh, rented some bikes, rode up and down Venice uh, uh, Beach. Pretty cool. Pretty fun. Uh, and uh, this Friday, um, flying out to Omaha, Nebraska, and um, I'm going to uh, Warren Buffett. I'm going to see Warren Buffett at the Berkshire Annual Meeting. So um, if you're in Omaha, uh, and, uh, the April 29th through May 2nd, uh, hit me up and uh, let's meet up. Uh, I don't know if there's a ton of stuff to do in Omaha. Anyhow. All right. Hey, look, today's the episode. I got to tell you, I did this one a long time ago, and... Um, and uh, I'm hatching a new plan, a little bit of a new plan uh, in terms of a, a, a little bit of a twist for the show. Um, you know, I want to speak to as many people as I can. And um, uh, I'm thinking about demographics here. Um, and it's, it's something I see Tom Ferry uh, doing recently. And, um, uh, you know, I don't know if he saw us, what we're doing or 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 not. Uh, and Tom actually just reached out recently. He's like, oh, hey, let's get back on the show. So uh, I don't know what's going on with that. But um, but just just be on the lookout. Now, here's what's up today. What we talk about. One of my most uh, one of my most favorite topics is outsourcing. Right, this is Michael Gerber's E Myth Revisited. We all need to play to our strengths and outsource our weaknesses. So we talk about outsourcing. Uh, we talk about why to build a team, how to build a team. Um, you know, some of the things if you are going to build a team, what what you need to build first. Some of those systems and processes. Uh, we talk about right. You know that that famous Jim Rohn quote. Right, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Uh, We talk about why it's so critical to level up and surround yourself with successful people. Um, And then uh, we talk a little bit about driving leads, uh, about internet marketing, another favorite topic of mine. Um, All right. Hey, listen, uh, join the community on Facebook. You can um, Facebook. uh, Well, you can certainly friend me on Facebook, uh, but you can join the conversation on Twitter at Super Agents Live is my handle. Hashtag for the show is unpack that idea. Uh, if you haven't been to the site, it's so weird. I got to tell you, this show is growing like crazy. It's growing like a weed. However, um, I don't know if it's because the world is going mobile or not, but our, our, our mobile downloads have doubled while our website traffic has been cut in half. Super weird. I'm not sure what's going on with that. But if you haven't been to the site, uh, go to superagentslive.com, download my book, um, get on my list. I share stuff on my list I don't share anywhere else. Um, and, uh, and that's that. Um, lastly, look, if you want to level up, 
You know what it is? It's radio. And I got to tell you, man, you know, we've been putting people on radio. They've been killing it. And uh, it's getting noisy. It's, it, 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 and I, I have to think, um, and this may be just me being narcissistic, uh, but, um, but I think we're driving so much awareness that radio works. You know, uh, people are just jumping on it on their own. I was actually talking with a girl, not going to say what city, and she, some people referred me to her, and we talked, we talked, we talked. And I was, I just kind of stopped talking, like, we're just, we didn't, we didn't connect uh, for a week or two. And then I put another agent in that market and realized that the girl that I had talked to bought radio herself. And I'm like, oh my God. And I got to tell you, you, just don't do that. If you don't speak radio, do not try buying radio. And by the way, it costs you nothing to work with an agency like Real Estate Radio Experts. Uh, we make our money, uh, we make a commission off of, uh, off of the spend. So you get professional level expertise uh, for no cash. How's that for a value proposition? All right. Hey, that's it. It's enough for me. Uh, let's get to it. Today on the show, pretty excited. Now, today's guest, her back office is going to look a lot like your guys's. However... And look, I'll tell you what it's like. She's got, there's three people. It's her, and she has two buyer's agents. She has one admin. Now, now here's where the story differs. With that small team, last year, 2014, she did 145 deals, 144 deals. You know, with that 144 deals, she's in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And uh, for that 144, let's put her in the top five teams for Remax and uh, number one in the state of Louisiana for uh, trans sides per team member or something like that. She'll tell us in a second. I'm thrilled to welcome Beth Alford. Hey, Beth, Beth thanks. For th- My tongue got caught. <laughs> Beth, thanks for taking the time out today. Oh, no. Great. My pleasure. I'm looking forward to it. So listen, Beth, before we get, I want to know how you guys are so, you know, you have such a lean team, but you guys are putting out big numbers. Uh, and uh, we were chatting a little bit before this. You know, I, it doesn't sound like you're working that 90 hours uh, a week that, that uh, most agents uh, seem to find themselves in. Before we get there, though, tell us, take a minute, tell us a little bit about who Beth is. Well, actually, I'm not a Louisiana native. I did move here back in uh, probably back in the 19, early 1980s, um, started a family, and real estate was really not uh, one of those things that was on my radar to want to do. It just kind of happened. Um, my husband at the time, uh, we still, we've been married 27 years, we um, started building homes, and I had a realtor at the time. And uh, I just kind of mentioned off the cuff that I thought it would be interesting to get into. And she was a, one of the top realtors in the local area. And she picked up the phone and called me one day. And I said, sounds great. Got involved in it. And I've been doing it now going on 18 years. So I've developed a team over the years. Um, probably in the last, out of the 18 years, last 10 years, we've had a team. And it's just worked really, really well because there's some parts of this business that I really enjoy doing and there's some parts of it that, you know, um, I feel is great to hand over to somebody else that that's their forte as well. Um, so and it's worked really well for us. Yeah, well, look, I mean, why did it take you? Why did it take you so long to build a team? And and here's here's the deal. I mean, here's why I'm asking that question is because, you know, what what we hear about on the show all the time, and what I obviously would would tell people is, you know, figure out what you want to make per hour, right? Fifty bucks, a hundred bucks, mm-hmm. eight hundred bucks. Outsource everything else. Working with a buyer, I mean, and as you know, Beth, right? You can literally work mm-hmm. with seven sellers for every one buyer. Why did it take you eight right. years before you, you know, started to d- build a team? Well, of course, you're learning. You know, you're learning from other realtors who have been in the business for a while, and you're just developing your clientele. Um, when you get into real estate, of course, you don't always just it just drops in your plate. You know that you have all these clients. It just takes time. And we were just, um, it just worked out really well for us how we developed our uh, processes that we've learned from other people and stayed in contact with past clients, and it just kept working. And, and, and as you work with your clients and you treat your clients well, they always come back and hopefully send clients back to you. And then as your business increases, you recognize that you can't do it all. So at that point, you, you tend to want to bring people in on your team to help assist and 
and give them something so that they can benefit from it as well right. as yourself. So, And I think the other thing, too, just hearing you say that, Beth, I think one of the things is, you know, with, you know, you're doing a very respectable number, 144 deals. Uh, you know, most people mm-hmm. that we have on the show are doing three, five, six, seven. Um, but but even with that, and I, and I don't take any offense to this, Beth, but even with that relatively known low number of, of total transactions, I mean, you look, you're number mm-hmm. one in the state. So I think I think for people out there, I think if you're not around uh, super successful people, you may not learn, you know, uh, to build a team right out of the gate. Oh, absolutely. And it just takes time. It takes time to learn how to develop those systems, too. So yeah. it works for all of you, you know. Um, but again, it's through watching and learning because when I first started out in real estate, I was on a team as well. Mm. So, and the team that I was on, she was the number one realtor in the state for the longest time, which she's no longer here, but, but she was, but there's several other realtors in our area that do really, really well in terms of transactions on teams. Uh, we just happened because our team is so small, it's put us in first place, but with the amount of transactions that we've done. I have a great team that work with. Yeah. Now, now listen, before we started recording, what you told me, we were, we were, we were talking about you and you knowing about this show, and you said, well, you know, I'm pretty busy during the day, and I, and I, you know, I work from 8 to 5. When I get home, I'm just wiped out, and I don't have time to listen to, to shows <laughs> like this. So, but, but, here, but look, I, I, there's a couple things, Beth, that I want to point out. Is Number one, you're mm-hmm. only working 8 to 5, right? So... Mm-hmm. Um, now, how do you, how do you, how do you pull that off? Do, do you train your clients early on? Say, listen, I'm, I, unless something's burning, don't call me after five thirty. Or like, how, how do you, how did you pull that off? And, well, it hasn't always been easy. But I haven't been the best uh, management of time, I can tell you. But um, uh, I will say that um, if working the nine to five job every day sometimes can can be, you know, turn into the weekend and picking up hours uh, by working away from the office. But uh, certainly the teams that are here, if I have to be out of the area, they're always very cooperative and wanting to help and assist and in, in picking up, you know, whatever needs to be done when I'm not away, especially the administrative side of things too. So um, I, I, long time ago when I first got into it, you know, not knowing how to manage my time very well, it was whenever the phone rang, you just answer it instead of being able to hand that off to somebody else to take care of it. Um, mm. And then working on the weekends. Well, it's, it's been very beneficial to be able to have the weekends off, you know. So it doesn't mean that you don't work sometimes on the weekends. Yeah. You have to. When something's sure. coming in, you take it, you know. But um, there is a lot of flexibility in this as long as you can begin to learn how to manage your time in a way that um, – you can have some quality time away from this this job. <laughs> right. Absolutely. It'll. I mean, I I think if you don't, I mean, that's that's you know that's when people burn out, and you know you're never going to have a career like yours that's has spanned almost two decades now. So you are you are you and your team are you know very lean, right? You have one admin, two buyers agents, mm-hmm. and yourself, but you're putting putting up good numbers. Um, you know, mm-hmm. you're doing a deal. You know, one deal every. You're closing a deal every three days. Um, mm-hmm. what, what have you done to, you know, I guess, I guess I want to ask about leads and I did, I was trying to do it in not in a specific way, but you know, wh- mm-hmm. how are you driving that kind of, uh, that kind of traffic? Well, you know, everything's so internet driven today, you know, um, paper marketing is just, uh, yesterday's news, you know, so a lot of the ways that we tend to drive um, people toward us is through our internet marketing, you know. And of course, there's so many um, companies that are out there that are that want your business. So you just have to pick those that have the most um, statistically the most hits on their site, which will ultimately drive them to you. And of course, working with relocation companies, mm. working with Dave Ramsey uh, uh, as an ELP for him, we get leads that way. Uh, there's several different avenues in which we receive uh, leads through the Internet other than our past clients, our referrals. Um, so all that works out. And I guess after being in it almost like two decades, like you said, you hope that some of your past clients will refer people to you and, and, and bring their friends too. So that's very helpful. Yeah. So so um, you said you, you talked – now, hold on. Before I ask this question – in terms of that 144 deals, what is the breakup between uh, listings and buyers? 
That's a good question. Um, I am pretty much uh, the one that kind of manages the listing side and the buyer agents work with the buyers. So on the listing side, I'd say it might be um, probably about 40% or 50%. It's pretty pretty basic. Wow. We okay. usually keep those statistics, you know, on a, at the year's end um, through our top producer program, and we usually try to find out exactly where most of our leads come from. That way we make sure we know where our marketing money is going. You know, is this lead coming from a referral? Is this lead coming from Zillow? Is this lead coming from Trulia or Realtor.com or Remax.com? So we try to keep a handle on that. Um, but, of course, you know, um, without the listings, you don't drive the buyer. So um, it's my goal to have as many of those as possible. But having two buyer agents, I hope they're just twice as busy as I am. <laughs> but um, I would say that... Um, they the on the buying side takes in uh, more than the selling side. Yeah, of course. So so with let me ask you this one. So you know you've you've been at mm-hmm. this for a long time. Um, if I did some if I did some e- quick math. So let's say eighteen years. Let's multiply it by just an average of sixty deals. Right. So mm-hmm. that's a th- over a thousand past clients. Um, mm-hmm. w- what? So I mean, you should be. I mean, a thousand past clients. I mean that that could be your whole business alone. Um, it what, could be. It could, so what are you doing to, to kind of – because I want to marry these two things. You, you talked about internet marketing and now what mm-hmm. are you doing to, to stay top of mind and encourage those 1,000 or 1,100 past clients to say, hey, go work with Beth? Yeah, that's a good question too because um, sometimes um, when I'm at a listing appointment, that's one of the first questions I ask them is if you had to remember um, – someone you know who was in real estate would you be able to remember that person's name you know so it's it's really staying out in front of your clientele through your marketing uh through top producers mainly how we do that uh and we and we do um try to stay in front of them through um facebook or other avenues you know there's so many different ways that you can reach your past clientele but top producers been one of the best ways that we can keep them on our system and reach out to them on a monthly uh, basis to kind of let them know that, hey, we're still here, right. uh, whether it's through sending them something uh, relative to um, a birthday or what's going on that month or just telling them something about what's going on in the air just to kind of keep them abreast to, to uh, some of the local activities that are going on. You just want to be in front of them, and you want them to know that you're here uh, not just as a realtor, but as a resource, you know, that they can call any time and uh, ask questions about anything that might be going on in the market. We do like to make ourselves very accessible to them instead of it just being, you know, all about the sales. It's not about that. It's about building the relationship. Yeah. You got to add value, add value, add value. Oh, you do. Mm-hmm. So, so, so in terms of being a resource, um, I have some ideas that but I won't, I won't tell you them right now, but like in terms okay. of being a resource, like how, how, uh, what does that look like for you for, to be a resource to these people? Well, it, it means a lot that if someone has something that, that, um, that if you walk them through the process, let's just say a first-time home buyer, yeah. you're a resource from the get-go for them because they don't have any knowledge probably whatsoever about the buying process or the selling process. So you want to be an educator for them, and you want to be able to provide them with the resources that they need. And, and when, you, when you help someone out in that way, and, and that's one of the great things when we have somebody call us and say, I've been referred to you, you know, and then I look back at who referred because they said that you were so good at explaining things and helping them through the process and just making sure that they felt like we were on top of everything that, was the, that pertains to the listing their home to the closing or buying process to the closing. And it's just making them feel like somebody was on top of it instead of them having to be on top of it for you. You know, right. you don't want the client to pick up the phone and call you and say, when is the closing or when am, when, when am I having my inspection or when is this happening? You want to be the one to pick up the phone and call them and say, Hey, this is the date that this will be happening. And, um, whatever else is going on with the file, just keeping them abreast to every aspect of it so that they feel like they're the only client that you're working with and that they feel like you're on top of it. Right. 
And I, and I think the other thing too, I think of, in terms of being a resource is saying, Hey, listen, you know, here's my list of, of trusted vendors or, Hey, you know, for the month, of, oh, sure. you know, for the month of June, mm-hmm. I got my pool guy to give you guys a, a 10% discount or if you sign up or whatever. Mm-hmm. Right. I understand what you're saying. Absolutely. We have basically because of the property management division we have here too, we have a ton of resources that mm. we can give out to people in terms of, you know, if they ever need anything, because a lot of times we have investors that we work with too, and uh, they need someone to install a fence or they need uh, gutters or whatever. I mean, we have a list of that, uh, those names accessible to us, um, available to anyone. But certainly, you know, being a resource for someone when you're listing a property, uh, which, you know, is the one thing that I really enjoy doing is the listing side of things. So when you're meeting with them and helping them get their home prepared for that first day on the market, it's it's all about making sure that it's in the best condition that it can be in, whether it still needs some updating or not, and provide them with everything that they need to get it to where it needs to be. Work within a budget that they have and try to help them with that, and certainly we try to do that. Now, now, in terms of being a resource or just staying top of mind, do you do other? Than, I know you, you, you know when you are saying top producer, what you're really saying is, hey, we, you know, we, uh, we're sorry. I just got a text and it threw me off. Um, That's okay. Um, uh, Top you- Producer is an internet-driven program that we have. Yeah, that it actually connects with our local MLS system. So every every potential contact or lead that we get, we put them into that system, and we have a very good internet-driven program that where we are able to reach out to them on a consistent basis. And, of course, you don't know what kind of resources that you can provide for them unless you actually are communicating with them and yep. you're speaking with them about exactly what their needs are. And you just want to be able to have those resources available to them when you do find out what those needs are. So Top Producer just gives us a, the ability to put them in a database yep. that works with us best. And, I, mm-hmm. and, I, and I, I really the, what I was wanting – I want to ask two questions here. But what I was getting at sure. earlier was I was going to ask you, do you, you – know, in addition to just sending out an email through, the, through Top Producer, do you, mm-hmm. you know, do you implement video with anything? Um, and then, and then here's, a, here's a question in tandem. Um, mm-hmm. Here's the, one of the things that I've – well, why don't you answer that and I'll answer a follow, ask a follow-up question. Actually, we haven't yet. Uh, it's something I really would like to start working on, I guess. Um, one of the things I guess has held me back is uh, basically, I guess, we're busy enough to where I haven't had to go in that direction, but it's not like it's not something we wouldn't want to implement, you know, right. at some point. I think a lot of people would really like a personal touch to have that. I mean, it's interesting how technology has just bombarded uh, us with so many different ways to be able to relate to people. So certainly something different on the market that not everyone's using is always something best to kind of tie into and and set yourself apart and be a little different Um, because somebody else is going to do it. You know, is that going to make someone want to buy or sell better than if you're not? I think it ultimately boils back down somewhat to some very basic concepts and that is if you take care of your client, whether they see you in a different light or whatever, and you give them the things that they need and meet their needs where they are because everyone wants something so quickly now that if you're, if you're, if you're able to, to, to meet their needs in that perspective, I, I think you win them over. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. And well, I think it ties in, like, mm-hmm. when, it, when you think of video, at least for me, I think what happens is, like, you just said it, you said everybody's attention span, you know, everybody wants it faster. So I think people's attention right. spans are smaller. So if, the, if you can reduce the friction in our communication, I'm going to obviously like that better, right? I open it up, I play a video. Right, and absolutely. So, absolutely. And, and it's time, time sensitive too. I mean, nobody wants to sit and read something that's, you know, five, 10 minutes long. Uh, it needs to be short and sweet and, and just something that's going to grab your attention and, and get you quickly because you're moving on to the next thing. Because sometimes your brain is thinking, what's next, right? right. Uh, unless you're just really in tune with what you are looking at because you have something you've got to, you know, really, really work on. But but it's true. I mean, you, you have a very limited amount of time that you, you have today, uh, I have found with clients, on being able to get their attention, being able to grab them and acquire them as a potential client. If you're actually, if, if we're talking about new clients, you know, someone that you haven't spoken to before or re- being referred to you in any way. 
Now, one of the things, one of the, one of the criticisms that I hear of, about top producer in, in particular is the templates for their emails seems like they, they, you know, they were done in the eighties. Um, has that, is that, has that been an issue for you guys or do, what do you guys do something kind of create your own or. I think you have to create your own, okay. be a little personal with it because yeah. I think people know, uh, I, I get emails all the time. We all get emails all the time. And a lot of times you can tell that they're just templates and, yeah. And I think if you kind of switch it up and change it, it really doesn't take a whole lot to do that. If you're just working with a buyer template, for instance, and you just change it up to be very relative to where it is today, and um, or if you already have a client in the in the in the queue where they're in the closing process, there's some pretty basic stuff that you want to be able to send them to kind of let them know what to expect within the next 30, 45 days. And it might be someone that's already really experienced and, and they're aware of that. But I think the point behind that is that, hey, they remember to send me something. Hey, you know, I got something from them. They're on top of it, you know, um, and, and they're providing me with information that I need whether I know it or not, you know. So yeah. I feel like somebody's really paying attention to my process in closing. Now, here's a, here's a question. I, I, I don't I, don't let it stump you, but but um, okay. <laughs> and it's not a it's not a trick question. But I mean, it's it's this. You might have to put this play. What do you know now, Beth, that you wish you would have known 18 years ago when you started? You know, I don't think I'd change a thing. I, I mean, it's it's almost like saying I wish I could be 20 again with the knowledge I have today. Well, of course, who wouldn't? Right. Right. <laughs> But it's kind of like that's what life is all about, right? It's about learning and growing and experiencing things and, and, and gaining knowledge. And, uh, you know, um, you're going to make mistakes. And I think you learn from those mistakes and you, you change your systems. I think if we all popped into this world with all the knowledge that we ever needed, it would be pretty boring. So it's one of those things where, you know, I, I'm, I've enjoyed the journey. It's been hard sometimes, and I think if there was anything I could have changed differently, it would be me personally on my time management when I first started. Um, I think if I could give any advice to anyone who's starting out in real estate, is really try to manage your time and educate yourself on the process. Um, that was one thing that I lacked. I didn't get a lot of education from my peers in the very beginning, so I just listened and I learned. And I wasn't taught, and um, so I wanted more because I, I love to work. And um, but of course, after 18 years, it does kind of wear on you. But um, I think that would probably be the only thing is just really trying to learn how to speak to buyers and sellers in the beginning, um, where it was just a real learning process for me. But I don't regret anything. It was it was it was a, it's been a great journey. Well, so, well, so well, I mean, let, let's talk about time management for a second. I mean, what what how, how do you uh, and look again? You have this three person team, and you guys are putting up mm -hmm. w w wonderful numbers. What is there some kind of secret sauce that you have developed or figured out in terms of managing your time and to be super effective between that eight and five p.m. Um, well, it's just choices. I've learned to just, you know, make better choices with my time and just say, well, because uh, a lot of, if I have like five files in front of me, you can walk in each day and realize that it's still going to be here. You know, if you, if you, if you leave at five o'clock or you leave at four o'clock, is it going to make a difference if you come tomorrow? No, it's just my personality is like, I, I know there's something that needs to be done, so let me do it now. And so that could run into those wee hours in the evening where it just really pushes your time and takes away quality time. Mm -hmm. So I've just learned to really try to, you know, make myself say enough. It's time to put it down mm -hmm. and it will be here tomorrow. You know, um, it, nothing's going to change between now and then. And I think when you realize that if you choose to stay and work longer, those are just, you know, at this point in my life, those are just choices that I'm making because I can, you know. Right. Um, but uh, other than that, the, the team that I work with are very, very good. If they're away, I'm here. I'm away, they're here. Uh, they know the files. They know the process, and they help. We all work together in making sure it happens for all of us because ultimately it's the team concept that 
we're we're trying to have here. It's not just about the business, it's about working together, and making it all happen for each other. Yeah, no, that's great, and I'm sure you guys have a wonderful culture there. But but hold on, see, Beth, th- throughout this interview, you like like just now, you, you talked about the files, right? You, and and mm-hmm. earlier you were talking about the the transaction. W- what's mm-hmm. what's different from when I ask some of these types of questions to other people and they come on the show, they focus mm-hmm. on the prospecting side of it. Are you, are you, is your business just, um, well, let me ask you that specific question. Mm-hmm. How much time in a day or in a week do you and or your team spend on actual prospecting? Well, that's a good question. Um, I'm hoping that the, that the buyer agents are prospecting daily, you right, know, through right. leads that come to them, of course, and I'm sure, I know they are. Um, for me on the selling side, certainly when leads come in, I, I guess when you, you say prospecting, uh, we st- I stay from this side on the listing side fairly busy that I don't have to pick up the phone and do cold calls. Got it. Would I be afraid to do that at this point? No. I, I, have, uh, I could pick up the phone today and go through FSBOs and introduce myself just like I did 18 years ago. But we're lucky enough that we haven't had to do that recently. So I have enough business that are coming in wow. that that keeps me busy enough to keep that eight to five thing going. Wow. You know, instead of if I wanted to go from eight to eight, sure I could. But you know, then it then it gets to the point where when is enough enough? You know. Yeah. Um, so you have got to have some quality of life. <laughs> yeah. No. No. And good for you. I mean, I, I, that is fantastic. Yeah. If you built this business, that you just, I mean, you've built this thing where you just come in and, and you're like, okay, I just have, like, there's another deal. I got to list it and just do the work. I right. think. I think that's that, right. Uh, you, I mean, you, you, people, you know, you that is an enviable position. Uh, it, it, only, it only took you 18 years, but you're there. And maybe you did that 10. Well, I don't know. Yeah. No. It's 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 a blessing. It yeah, really absolutely. is. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I, I contribute that to how we've all ran this business in the past because those calls are not going to come in unless, you know, you're relying upon those referrals or you're relying upon your marketing or you're relying upon, you know, um, uh, some lead generation format that you have set up. So we, we hope that everything that we have implemented works enough so that it keeps it running on a consistent basis without having to pick up the phone and going, where's my next lead right. going to come from, you know, so... Okay. Well, good for you. Um, okay. Uh, so, so uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're gonna wrap up here. I'm gonna ask you the same three questions I ask okay. of everybody because um, uh, we're we're at 32 minutes or so a little bit over. But you know, for you and your, you know, you're both either either professionally or personally, Beth. Who's been a mentor to you? Oh wow, that's a good question. Um, a mentor to me. Um, well, you know. I'd like to contribute a part of that to the team members that actually work with me. You know, uh, I do have, um, I think because, you know, to, to, to lead, you have to somehow um, make it in a way that those that you serve with, that that, that team is on one level and that, that you all work together and, and, and it, it, it benefits everyone in the process. But um, I've had some wonderful uh, team members that work with me. One of them, mainly Linda Reeves, has been with me for several years, and she's just been, you know, great to work with. And she inspires me. I hope I inspire her. And uh, when you when you have someone that you can work with so well throughout the years, and she's been with me several years, you know, to me, that influences me to do better. And I hope it influences her to do better. You know, I've I've had some I've had a good broker that I've worked with in the past, Juanona Squires. Um, you know, but um, ultimately, just just um, watching others and, uh, but mainly those that you work with closely. And I would have to say that that is my team members. That's awesome, and I think I think it, I, what I thought you were going to say when you when you started talking about about leadership, I thought, you, and you kind of explained this. You kind of said, you know, I think the, some of the notion was right to be a good leader. You ha- also have to be able to follow, and that's and I, exactly right. You yeah, have to. That's right, and so yeah, yeah, and I think you expressed that pretty well. Um, so so listen, we always ask for a book recommendation. Now I know you're busy, so you may not have time to read, but but here's a setup, mm-hmm. and hopefully you've read some. Uh, okay. I'm an aspiring agent. I have 25 bucks. What book should I go buy today? <laughs> That's great. 
Oh, my gosh. Uh, let's see. I know John Maxwell has a great book out. Um, I haven't read it yet, but it's in my – <laughs> I read his – I read his um, – uh, quotes on leadership every day. So oh. I get an email from him um, every day uh, in, in referencing leadership. And it's all about servanthood, too. It really is. And um, But he has a book out on leadership, and I'm sorry I can't uh, He's got a ton. What the actual no, that's okay. Quote, he's he's but, got I'll, – I'll, I'll read but some. he's a great author. Yeah. yeah. John Maxwell's a great author, and he's a great leader. So, um, you know, and- I, I – I like him because he teaches you not only to lead but to follow, and he sets that example. I mean, you just you you have to, and and when you can do that and and set people up uh, above you instead of yourself setting above others, it just makes for you know a great outcome. Yeah, no, I agree. And he's Maxwell is all about leadership. He's got five levels of leadership. He's got qualities of a leader, the 360 degree leader, the laws of leadership, Mm -hmm. developing leader within you. His latest book was 15 laws of the 15 invaluable laws of growth. Now for my audience, for everybody out there, you guys, if you have not read a John Maxwell book, um, you should, um, you know, get any one of those. They're all great books. He's a great writer and get a book free from us. Just use our try. Just use our link audibletrial.com slash superagentslive and go get, go, get a, go get a John Maxwell book. Now, now to wrap up here, here's the last question I ask everybody. And, um, mm-hmm. and for you, Beth, you know, do you, you know, you've been at this for almost 20 years. You've built this fantastic business where you just really have to sh- suit up and show up and it works. Um, uh, you know, do you have a personal habit that you feel has contributed to your success? Um... Yeah, I just I just think making sure that when you come to work, you come to work prepared. You come to work uh, with your clients in mind. You know, um, making sure that um, you make them feel like um, that that you're taking care of everything that needs to be taken care of for them. Um, uh, I say habit, uh, just being on top of the game. You know. Um, not uh, being slackish about what you do. You know, if, if, if you do, then I think your success rate could, could potentially, you know, it could fall, you know. But I think when you set a standard and you live by the standard of making sure that you want to run your business to the best that you can, I think it's a win-win thing. I love it. I love it. Well, listen, Beth, I, I always encourage my audience, if they've gotten anything out of this episode, to reach out and say thank you to you, my guest. Where can people, oh, awesome. find, where can people find you, Beth? Um, they can go to my website, BethAlford.com. It's real easy. <laughs> Great. And if all you guys out there, if you're you know, r- r- driving your car, walking your dog, riding your bike, all this stuff will be on the show notes for Beth Alsford at Super Agents Live. Hey, Beth, I'll be the first one to kick off the thank you train. Thank you. I appreciate you taking the time out. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Well, let's stay in touch. Have a good one. See you, mm-hmm. Beth. Bye-bye. This show is produced by me, Toby Salgado, with help from our research team and production done by Viralcast. If you're building a team and want to make sure you're doing it the most efficient way, reach out to Corker and Coaching. They coach 83 of the nation's top producing teams. And for our listeners, they'll give you a free business evaluation. Send an email to Bubba at CorkerandCoaching.com and let them know I told them, told you guys to call.